think of the Romans, what comes to mind? Gladiators, engineering wonders, conquest, slavery, and of course, math. Wait, no, math? Unless, of course, you've heard how bad they were at it. But the Goths, Vikings, Inuit, they were all rather bad at it as well, as are goats. So why single out the Romans? And were they actually that bad at math in the first place? Well, for a start, they didn't have a symbol for zero. And why would they? After all, it means nothing. To further complicate things, they used letters to represent numbers and had to combine multiple letters for pretty much anything larger than ten. So, even for doing basic arithmetic like adding or subtracting, it was about as efficient as asking a goat to do algebra. But the Greeks had a similar, arguably worse, system. Yet, they were famous for their mathematical prowess. So, were the Romans just particularly thick? Well, they did create one of the biggest empires in history, ruling over many different nations and peoples, even those pesky Greek intellectuals. So, they can't have been all that dim. Arguably, the Romans were just not that interested in math. And why would they be? It's difficult and complicated, and surely that's what those wonderful Greek slaves were for. The Romans were a practical bunch, so they only dealt with math when they had to. In other words, while the Greeks were mathematicians, the Romans were engineers. Unfortunately, while history remembers the great Greek mathematicians, it doesn't have a place for the engineers or architects who built the Roman Empire. Similarly, the intricate temples of India, the Great Wall of China, the castles and cathedrals of medieval Europe, all were built by professionals who were probably quite good at math. So while the names of the great mathematical minds of the Greek civilization echo down the ages, Rome, despite its achievements, seems to fall short in this regard. But this doesn't mean the Romans were bad at math. Rather, they were good at the practical application of it, and just had no interest in theoretical developments. So why did Greek culture focus on works of theory, while Rome focused on works of engineering? Well, the Greeks lived in small city-states where reputation was valuable and literacy was high. Thus, intellectual achievement was their go-to expression of their greatness. In larger empires and civilizations with lower literacy, the most effective way to demonstrate one's power was not through intellectual superiority, but through something more material, vaster and more impressive, like an aqueduct or public baths or indoor heating, or especially a colosseum. Those things were a little bit more noticeable to the average man rather than a new theory or formula. Indeed, what marauding Mongol, Welsh warrior or Teutonic tribesman would not be impressed and intimidated by the appearance of a huge wall, castle or aqueduct in the lands his father had once called his own? So, engineering was a way of physically demonstrating a culture's superiority and instilling fear and control in the populace. And for an empire that relied on its reputation of invincibility, this was of the utmost importance. In short, Rome left the thinking to the Greeks. Indeed, Greek was the language of science in the Roman Empire, and while the Romans had a few original mathematicians, they were all culturally Greek in origin and thought. Diophantus, the father of algebra, Pappus, Hero, Ptolemy, all worked in the library of Alexandria when it was under Roman rule. But crucially, the library kept its own Greek tradition of research and development. So while there was a lot of excellent mathematics, physics and astronomy being done in the Roman Empire, it was done by people who wrote in Greek, had Greek names and probably identified as Greeks. Some were slaves, others may have had Roman citizenship, but all were culturally Greek. Furthermore, the Greco-Roman education system venerated the past. It was a backward-looking system with memorization and rhetoric valued above all else, not an environment where original thought was encouraged. Roman youths might be sent to Athens or Alexandria to study, but afterwards they were expected to pursue the traditional Roman careers, like conquering and enslaving entire peoples. So culturally, the Romans just weren't that into theoretical math. Indeed, Roman numerals are believed to have originated from tally sticks, a counting system used by shepherds as a memory aid. A good way to record the number of goats one has, but not something that lends itself to solving the mysteries of the universe. Perhaps why were the Romans bad at math is the wrong question. Because they weren't per se bad at math. They were bad at original thinking. So why then did some civilizations thrive and innovate while others didn't? What made the Greeks, Babylonians and Egyptians brilliant at math? 
What are the ingredients for a transformative mindset of inquiry and intellectual curiosity? And why do goats keep popping up in this video? These are just some of the questions we may look at in the future. So, if you like this video, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button or supporting me on Patreon so I can continue exploring the fascinating side quests of world history. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time for the next side quest. <laughs>